You're listening to Guitar Talk with Dave and John. Good morning, everybody. It is New Year's Eve, 2018. We're getting ready to fire off into 2019. Big things await for all of us. Sorry, all right, all year. right, all right. <laughs> DL, hey, guys, welcome, to, welcome to Guitar Talk, everybody. This is episode nine. Um, what shake it is the JCM 900. There's a rumor abound that you picked one up. Yes, it is behind me. As you may see, it is the JCM 900 uh, Mark III, which is the 2100 model. Uh, very similar to the, it's the follow up to the JCM 800 Mark II um, 2203, which was the Mark II JMP 2203, and then the Mark I JMP, which came out in 76. I assume that we're going to have. I assume we're going to have a demo coming out on your channel, at some point. At some point, I'm going to retube it and do a lot of stuff. Um, just retube it first and make sure the caps are good. I'll take it to my guy and have him run it. Right on. So, um, what was this? What was the story? What was the skinny? Is this thing thrashed? It doesn't look thrashed. Oh no, no. This guy, first of all, the nicest guy, he was very difficult to deal with. And right from Jump Street, I said to my buddy, I'm like, this guy doesn't want to sell it. Either his wife is making him get rid of the amp, or he really just wants to it's this is his joy. And uh when I met him, it, we had a bunch of laughs and uh it, I totally was right. I mean, it wasn't his wife, but it was like this was something that he he bought in 93, it's a uh, 92, uh, he bought it at Thoroughbred Music, which uh, I find funny because you and I both know Elliot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, owner of Dean Guitars. Yes, yes. As we've discovered, he may or may not be deceased, we're not sure. Yes, however, um, but yeah, so he was, it was all original, it's got the original tubes, it's... um. This is like the kind of find you, you want to find when you, you know, I had another guy I called up and I said, is it all original? And he says, yeah, it's all original. I had Joey Voltage go through it and make sure that it's, and it made it sound better. Joey Voltage. Uh, Come on. <laughs> I know. I That's... said to him, well, Joey Voltage is a mod guy. So a mod guy went through your amp and made it sound better, but he didn't mod the amp. It's all original not... except, except the circuit board and the tubes. And the yeah. tube sockets. The only thing original about his was the Marshall logo on it. Right. <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, and he great. was like, oh, it's a great amp. Oh, my favorite thing about that guy, who, which was classic, was I asked him what condition the amp is. And he says, give me your cell phone number and I'll text you a video. I'm like, awesome. I give him my cell phone number and I get a video. <laughs> another condition it's in <laughs> like, oh, i was boy. like this is the condition of the amp it sucks <laughs> you know what i mean i was going bananas then i had another guy who i was locked in to buy it from him and he's like it has a scratchy pot i'm like no problem calls me up the day before i'm supposed to meet him and says yeah i changed my mind i'm keeping it so it's just deserved 
that I have something of this caliber where the guy never touched it and it was it's been basically in a uh, time capsule. Exactly. It's deserved because you went through this incredible hardship and this long fought road <laughs> of two of not only one but two phone calls. <laughs> I had, I had followed up by an email. Oh, it boy. was un- <laughs> it was unbelievable. Oh, I don't. We, I don't even know how. Can we get Joey Voltage on the program? I would love to. I don't know Dude. who the guy is, but this was the second time his name's come up. There was another guy before I got my DSL. There was another guy selling a DSL fifty, and he was like, "Oh, it's the best sounding one I've ever heard." Joey Voltage did some mod to it. And yeah. I'm like, great. What's the mod? I love and it. He was like, well, I'm not sure what the mod was, but um, but the effects loop doesn't work. Oh, boy. Yeah. Like, you could just jump the effects loop. You know what I mean? If you, But these people all disengage it. It's like, yeah, now you've made the imp worthless to me. Hey, great job. Nice face. That's the, I'm going to sneeze. I'm not approving of this disconnecting the effects loop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, uh, the then effects, I had a deal with this guy. I don't, I don't get, and I never have got that like tone purist. I'm going to, I'm going to take the effects loop out of the circuit mentality. And I feel like most of the series effects loop, there's really no discernible difference. If your ear is that good, where you can have the blindfold on and be in a room with, you know, your JCM 900 uh, with the series effects loop built in, not being used. And then with it being completely taken out of the circuit, you can tell which is which. I mean, good on you. But then you wouldn't be playing a Marshall. Yeah. (laughs) Right. If you have that good of ears, you're not playing a Marshall. That's funny. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't get the joke when you first said it. Now I get it. Oh, boy. Ah, slow. Slow this yeah, but, morning. So then uh, then uh, this guy I know was selling um, on Facebook. He commented that he was selling some uh, a pedal board, like a pedal train mini. So I picked that uh, up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you, if you look behind me here, you'll notice that there's no wire rack of stuff anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. You got you, wire you, rack of stuff. Um, I w- I've been decluttering. That's the whole reason that rack was there. It was meant to get all of my clutter out of my closets, stack it up so I had to look at it and figure out where it was all gonna go. So put a bunch of stuff on Reverb, put a bunch of stuff on Facebook, and um, some people were sucker enough to take some of it. Yes, I was one of them. Exactly. You know what's it's funny because I was looking to see what people were getting for a Marshall cab because I just can't see myself having that cab and the Mesa cab. The Mesa cab's fantastic. What do I need a Marshall cab for? And I have the two EVH with the um, Celestians in it in the, in the two by 12. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking and I'm like, I'm looking and I go online and I'm like, oh, wow, someone's selling a, a two, uh, a, pe- a pedal steel with a C9 and an E. I'm just like, oh, I gotta stop. A C6 and an E9. I'm like, I gotta oh, stop dude. looking because I'm. Of course, I'm thinking, it'd be awesome if I learned pedal steel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so dangerous. It really so, is. You were telling me that this guy that you bought the 900 from played the amp for a handful of years and hasn't touched it in 20 well, years. He says over 20 years. You know, this is the antithesis of me. This guy. Right. Which is so good for him. He gets yeah. an amp and he's committed. I I have an amp. I play it for like five months. And then I don't play it for two weeks. And I'm like, ah, this, I've been playing this thing for two weeks. I got to get rid of it. And then I yeah. go and buy, buy something else. You are like that. You are and way I more do it, fickle. Oh, dude, I do, it every, I do it every three to six months. Yeah. It's nuts. It's totally nuts. I get that it's nuts. I think that it's rooted in the fact that I'm not like a touring guitar player. Yeah. You know, remember when, when Behringer gave us Behringer gave us a couple of amps. I think you got the V55 yeah. and I got the 22. V, I had a V22. Oh, you had the V22. Yeah. yeah. Either way, it was like we you had it for like a day and you're like, "Yeah, I'm not keeping it." <laughs> no. No, I played it at a rehearsal with a band and um the thing had no output. Like I turned it all the way up 
in the band room and it wasn't keeping up with the drummer. It was yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Remember Ryan? Yeah, Ryan Pekerchuk. Yeah. Yeah. It was I was in the room with them. We were playing like, you know, covers and it was like the Colt and things like that. And the thing had no output. You yeah. Know? I've played eighteen watt Doctor Z's that were probably two times louder than that amp was. Right. You know, it just goes to show you that wattage doesn't signal everything. I think though some of the Bugera, the later stuff, like the stuff with the infu- Physium, Infusium, whatever that system's called, the Infusium, the Infusium, where you can take out one tube and put it in, it automatically biases. You don't have to buy match tubes. It biases everything automatically. Yeah, I never tried it. And they have the they have the PV6505 clone. They have the Marshall JCM900 clone. Um Dual reverb clone. They sound pretty good. Those uh, those Bugiras. Uh, but and I that, remember not. I remember not liking the. Um, I remember not liking the uh, the Bugera, the V twenty two, and the other one, the V fifty five, whatever okay. it was. I just thought it was crap. It didn't sound good for like a clean amp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was very much headroom and. Um... Now, like I said, the volume wasn't really there. But either way, um, we're going into 2019. What's um? You want to recap anything from the year from 2018? What do you um, think? I'm trying to think. You know, it's. I, I'll tell you what's funny, and and then we can recap. I think 2018 is a uh, not a bad year. I think it's a good year for, you know, what's funny. I see like a lot of young kids listening to not just what's on the radio, but listening to like the stuff we listen to. I'm sure your kids like the stuff when you play stuff in the car, yeah. they want to hear your stuff. You know, it's like uh, daddy's music, but um, that'll change. I don't think anything is going on in the industry that's so earth shaking. Like I, I look on YouTube and I see like different people that do like guitar channels and they were all like yeah nam's coming are you going to nam i'm going to nam and i'm like i I couldn't think of something less interesting to do yeah well you've been there you've been there a thousand times the um no but i I understand people who go there once or twice but it's like i think that a lot of that is is catering to the audience of people who don't get that opportunity to go, you gotta, you know, it's what was, uh, what was the dude's name at fast times at Ridgemont high? He goes, Demo- Oh, Mark Idiot. Ratner or Damone. Damone. And he's like, wherever you are, that's the place to be. You know, right. He's talking to him. He's like, look at this. This is, this great. I think you have to play that character. If you're in this industry regarding Nam, when it comes to, your, you know, 200,000 subscribers who are watching, who are all like thinking like, Nam must be the most amazing thing in the world. I mean, I'm kind of right there with you. I could be, I could be over it, totally over it. But there's a lot of people out there that have never gotten to experience it who are probably dreaming that it's maybe something more than it really is. No, I know. But what I'm saying is it's like, like people are like, oh, you're going to check out the PRS booth this year. What do you think PRS is doing that's going to be so exciting you're going to go there and it's going to be like, oh, it's a guitar. I get it. It's a guitar. Right. Oh, up, up. oh, did you see Ernie Ball has some new stuff? Oh, really? It's a guitar. Yeah. It's a guitar. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not getting it. I don't understand. Now, I enjoy, uh, uh, and, if, and I remember, you, you know, Lonnie. Lonnie does the amp show twice a year oh, sure. in, in Van Nuys. Yeah. That's fun because the amp show, it's like, Amps to me are fun. That's your interest. Well, it's not that it's my interest. In, in, a, in being a player, you have your instrument that you want to hold and that you feel is comfortable for you to play, and that's your instrument. So it's like um, when, you, when you're playing the amp, that's just another voice t- for your baby to have, your oh, instrument. I get it. I get yeah. it. But the guitar, it's like... If you're going to plug it into the same old amp and, oh, wait a second. I have a Les Paul right here. This is a buddy of mine's. Hmm. It is a Les Paul a tribute. tribute. Yeah. It is. It's what all year, black. What year tribute is that? 56 tribute? Something? I 
No, I don't. Because I'm not the P90, sure. The P90 tribute. Um, well, they, I think they have a 50 and 60 with that now. They just do whatever. Oh, they, they don't okay. do it so like, but look at these pickups. These are Seymour Duncan's. Those are, is that the staple pickups or whatever they call Those them? Are, they are staple P90s. Yeah, they're cool looking. Yeah. How they sound? They're good. It's a, it's a nice sounding. I'm going to do a demo for them on it. Um, you should go to NAM and see what Seymour Duncan's up to. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. I bet they make a pickup. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, for us, it was different because when you work in the business, you're on the phone a lot of times with people and you don't right. really have a face to them and you're speaking to them once or twice a week. So it's nice to finally go and put faces to voices. And, right. And so at being in the industry, working at the stores or working for a manufacturer, NAM has a very strong place. It's because it also makes it a little bit more community. You know what I mean? But as a guy going there and it's like, um, I, I remember I would go and I'd check out what Bogner had, Andy Fuchs. And um, other than that, I could care less. Um, Stephen Fryett sometimes had some nice stuff. Uh, Brian Wampler puts out a new pedal every now and then. But to get the parking, to deal with the lines, Getting in there and then dealing with the fact there's no food, you know, it's like you, you basically it's oh, like, dude, here's millions of dollars of 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 music gear. Have a hot dog and some cotton candy and get on your way. It's like, are you shitting me? They've they've never figured out. Still to this day, they've you haven't been there in what five years or six years? Yeah, yeah. They five. they they still have the absolute worst food situation set up. They have it's no. All- there's no like roped off area for tables. You know, there's 300,000 people visiting and you're absolutely right. You go there and it's like, ah, oh, you can get this, uh, you can get this contaminated Caesar salad down here, which may or may not have E. coli in it. You can get right. this hot dog here, which probably has E. coli in it. Right. And, uh, and, and if none of it had E. coli before it was leaving our hands and into yours, now the only place that you're able to sit and eat is on top of that garbage can that's hooded. Exactly. You have to set your tray down on top of that in order to eat something. And it's just it's, like, yeah, dude, it, how it, how have you guys not figured that out? I it's it's you mind boggling me. to me because also if you walk through the place, it doesn't really look like anyone's missing a lot of meals. You know what <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not oh. like uh yeah. <laughs> it's not like everyone's walking around going, which way's the gym? Oh, Tommy, don't use the gym bit. No, you know what I mean? Oh, it's I'll like... It. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's like literally a lot of fat guys walking around and people... Yeah. And then it's like, uh, oh, hey, they have Elio's. Oh, I can get a slice of Elio's pizza for $8? This place is a fucking dream. Thank <laughs> God. After I'm done eating my Elio's, let me go see what uh, what Fender's doing. <gasps> They're making strats. It's like, come on. And then every strat you look at's got a sold sticker on it because anything they made that's interesting, they sold the the Wednesday night before. Right. Oh, to yeah. private it, it, right. to private dealers. Yep. My right. favorite thing about Nam is when you get like the guy that you're talking about, and he's got half of his hair missing, but the rest of it's long and stringy. It's right. dyed, it's dyed so black that it's blue. Yeah, and then he's got his girlfriend or wife with him, and she is dressed in like patent leather, the same outfit that she would have worn to like the slippery when wet tour in '84. She found it, pulled it out of the closet. Now she looks like 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 she's melting out of it, like a like a grilled cheese sandwich. Like you know what I'm talking about? Like <laughs> and. The, she- it's the right. funniest thing in the world. With it's her leopard, like, oh. with her leopard skin purse, dude. Right. I mean, it's just it. It is like a it. <laughs> I could basically somebody wants to go, and I'm like, oh, what, what should I see at Nam? Here, let me write it down for you. Oh, I, I never heard of this. Well, this is what you're gonna see walking down the aisle every time you go down. Uh huh. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's 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 not fun. I I don't think it's fun and. Uh, the other thing is it seems like like a lot of these guys that do these types of podcast stuff who love talking about NAM and stuff. Also, I think it's like um, 
these people are so geek. Like everything's about the gear. I mean, this is cool. I was, I would. This tribute is a cool guitar. The pickups are cool. I wouldn't spend a nickel on it. Not for yeah. me. Right. But but if if I were if I were to, it would be like one of my main guitars. But I I mean. I know I have a, a quite a bit of strats and tellies here, but in the scheme of life, that's not a lot. That's all my instruments right there. And you, you, you knew me when when I had a lot more than this. Sure. But but I, I've come to the thing. It's like just let me play a handful of the instruments that feel good. I can have the different pickups in it. But like I could care less what Nick Huber is releasing at Nam. That or, guy. That guy makes really nice guitars. But yeah, beautiful. I know, I know what you're saying. But I, I know what care. you're saying. Yeah. The um, the um, you know what I care when PRS have... makes when when Paul calls me and says, "Hey, I got a guitar for you." Okay, no yeah. strings, I'll play it. Perfect. There you, there you go. Well, that's when I'm. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be hard to play with no strings. Boom. <laughs> that, and that's how you do it, folks. This is. Oh, how... there you go. <laughs> Oh man. So I saw I saw I was watching a bunch of videos this morning and um I saw a video Linda Perry was being interviewed. You know Linda Perry. Of course she She's uh wife of Steve non-blondes. Perry and Joe Perry. Yeah, right. Born <laughs> on uh, blondes and uh she right. produced uh Christina Aguilera and wrote beautiful for Christina Aguilera. Yep, she wrote a whole bunch of stuff for Pink. She's like a prolific songwriter in mm. that genre. Anyway, she was talking about recording people, and you mentioned a minute ago that everybody focuses too much on the gear. I'm guilty of it. I think we're all guilty of it to a point, but she was talking about in the studio, um, she was like, God, the difference between like a properly set up rig sounding good and sounding bad is all the player, you know? And what she had mentioned is she was like, I had a band in here that I was recording and the guitar just wouldn't sit in the mix. I, it, and she was like, I couldn't get it to happen. And then after the session, Rick Nielsen was in the room with her. And uh, I guess he picked up the guitar and started playing. And she was like, holy shit, the rig sounds good. What did you do? I said, I didn't do nothing. I just, I just played it. I just turned up the volume and played it. That's all I did. I didn't touch anything, I promise. And she was like, ah, shit, you know, because it's, you know, it's what she was saying. It's, it's a lot of times the tone is so in your hands, as you know, Mm -hmm. and it's in your note choices and it's in your phrasing and none of the gear in the world is going to fix that. Yeah. So, you know, don't forget to practice while you're out there scouring Craigslist for your next gem. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's the main thing I, I try to tell everybody on my channel is, is don't worry, like, there's a guy out there who's got a channel, and I know you know who I'm, gonna, I'm talking about, I don't have to say names, but he always says, know your gear. Why? Why do he, he you know, <laughs> no, but my point is, is why know your gear? Like, how about learn how to play? Forget about knowing your gear. You know what, when, if, if you're good enough on the guitar, somebody else has to know your gear for you. All these guys have guitar techs. Let them worry about how to change the string, how to do this. You get up there and learn how to play. I saw that guy get lit up by, you know, the guitarologist? Have you heard yes. that one? He yeah. got lit up the other day by that guy because apparently it's becoming a pattern. He will buy and then like do segments on it and then return it. Right. And so, and that's like, if you're a guitar player and you're going to an indie shop or even a guitar center, it doesn't matter. If you're, out there and you're buying a piece of gear going home recording with it and then returning it using it for a show and then returning it or doing whatever you're doing you're an asshole right i agree you are i mean if you're benefiting off of it you're giving some 19 year old kid like the hope that maybe he's going to make a commission check finally on top of his minimum wage and then you you return it for no other reason than you just wanted to use it for one night you're an asshole that's all there is to it don't yeah. be that guy. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I have a lot of problems with uh, with a lot of the guys on here. I'm not just singling anybody yeah. out, but but I, I I do think that that was a problem, and I did believe, I did agree with Brad, the guitologist, on that. But then oh, you after saw that, that segment too, I did, and then I also saw that he made it. He was making like uh, he did a video afterwards trying to mock him and. And basically just being a dick about it. Whatever. It's like, you know, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do with your life. I think people Wait, which should. one which one was mocking it? 
You saying that the guitarologist was doing a mocking video? No, the no, other the, way around? the other way oh, around was it, mocking it, him, doing like a live thing, trying to get the guitarologist viewers. And it's like, you know, just trying to be an ass about it or a dick about it instead of yeah, saying, okay. yeah, you know what? That might have come off looking bad. It did come off look bad. It did. It did look bad. Yeah. Um, everyone's, you know, worked in stores. And if you're going to buy a guitar online, um, you better, number one, know what it is. And if there's something like you think the, the strings aren't seated in the nut properly, fix it. It takes two seconds. If you got to go put a new nut on it because the nut was messed up, call them up and tell them that's what you had to do. They'll credit you for it. Right. They don't care. Um, I, I Like I said, I think the guys over at Sweetwater do an excellent job. I think they do a great job. And I always have to say, because you and me rem remember some of the people that came into the store, the people who were the most critical of a brand new guitar and everything about it, to me, were always the worst players. God, what was his name? Steve something. Ugh. I didn't want to say it on here, but that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, I don't remember his last name, so we don't have to I do. totally ridicule him. Yeah, just leave it, leave it alone. So Steve was prolific. He'd yes. buy the expensive guitar. He would special order the expensive guitar. He would special order them, and ah, I always I gave him I a smoke. I always gave him a smoking deal, and then he would sit there and he would be like and play it. So discerning. And then when that time when he tried to pull the, do you know who I am? I play this and I do that. I'm like, I think you suck. <laughs> and I banned him. Remember, I banned him. And then I do. Tra Travis was calling me from Guitar Center saying, dude, what kind of deal did you give this guy? He's trying to, he's saying he paid this for that guitar. I'm like, I don't deal with him anymore. That's why he's going to you. I said, charge him whatever you want to charge him. But yeah, that was, I mean, I, you, you, you deal with a lot. You never forget the guys who are jerks, you know? You and, just forget uh, all the nice guys. You do. You do <laughs> I'm, because yeah, they I'm just... Kidding. I'm kidding. No, looking. I know. But, you know, it's like you don't... Not that you forget them, but, you know, unless they're buying something from me every day, you just, you know, wish them the best. But right. a guy, if you walk into a guitar store and you strum a guitar... I mean, I've played many guitars where another guy will lip pick it up and be like, uh, dude, I, I think they eat, you know, whatever they'll complain. I'll be like, dude, just play. Yeah. Like, it's in the ballpark. Play. What the hell are you? I, I just think people are crazy. Well, yeah, I think that there's you, something, to, something to the uh, the lack of satisfaction in yourself. This is, you know, my I have no psychology background other than one college course, but. I, you know, you get a lack of satisfaction in your own playing, and it's a transference onto the instrument. You find something to criticize so you don't feel as bad about yourself. That's you know, unbelievable. I, I believe Yeah, that. It's, I know what you're talking about. It's like, I only play things with a bone nut. And then you like right. hear the, the, the G chord being strummed, and it's out of tune. And he's like, gee, right. it's like, well, tune it first. It'll right. work. Yeah. You know? but, yeah, um, no, it's, it's, it, it it's is so... Yeah, it is what it is. But I just think that like so many people on here are like so into, um, oh, let me show you like what's wrong with this. Like I'm the expert yeah. because I'm going to show you what's wrong with a guitar that Sweetwater sent me. Well, that doesn't make you an expert. It just makes you a dilettante, you know, <laughs> because you can fix it in two seconds, but you would much rather make it the arduous task. Um, you know, right. it's like because you can make a video out of that. Right. It's the yeah. arduous task of, oh, you know what? I don't love it. And this string is high. It's like, well, and I, again, I don't mean to just pick on that because when I saw Brad's video on that, it made me think of Steve. It made me think of other people that I've dealt with in the past who I just banned because I would just, and you, you know me, I'm, I, uh, I don't really have a, a, a tolerance for horse shit. And I would just say, yeah, you're not coming in here anymore. I didn't care. I was like, I, I, we were better off without them. And it's, it, it's also, it rubs off on people. And here you have now the internet where people are watching. And I think Brad's channel is awesome because Brad's fixing amplifiers and doing stuff. And I'm like, man, I hope my amp guy knows this. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. good. He's yeah. good. And he, and he's got his stuff down and, um, 
And there's lots of other guys. There was another repair guy I watched that fixed a 900 uh, dual reverb. And he did a couple of mods to it right away. And I was like, this guy's good. I can just tell he's good. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think those are the guys who try to fix what's wrong doing videos much better than people who are just showing, see, see, like I just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. That sort of what is that? What are they saying? The negative press is the sort of thing that like attracts people. It's like gossip, right. you know. Everybody, yeah. you know, general people that aren't interested in maybe, you know, if somebody was posting a video on repairing a JCM nine hundred, the only audience for that is somebody who either has a broken nine hundred or somebody who's interested in buying a nine hundred, who's discerning enough to realize that you know they want to know how accessible repairs to that amp are. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas if you write a video where you're just trashing a 900 because that's just what you right. do, maybe anybody who owns an 800 or a 2000 might say, oh, the 900 is a dark horse, you know, it's or not dark horse, but it's a black sheep and, you know, that right. stinks. So I'm going to enjoy this video because it's getting trashed and that is what I agree with. So you, uh, you expand your audience a lot by just making a, a shitty video like that. Right now, um, I was watching. I was watching. Do you watch Joe Rogan ever? Occasionally. Yeah, I like. I like him. I think he's, oh, he's great. I think he's entertaining. He was doing a segment with Tom Segura, who is funny as hell. I don't know if you know Tom Segura. Um, he's got some specials on Netflix. You should watch them. They're hilarious. Anyways, there was a there was um, a segment where Joe Rogan was saying, "My, you know, my podcast." Uh, is getting demonetized for, you know, because YouTube will flag things for demonetization. Right. Right. So he was talking about it from the sense that he had an episode with, um, I don't know if it was like Jordan Peterson or somebody. Anyways, it, it got flagged for demonetization because it was an opposing viewpoint to whatever, you know, the people who are in charge of YouTube. Um, right. You know, whatever it is that they feel is appropriate or not. Um, and, and the only reason I'm bringing that up is because it brings it back around to this point on somebody like a, like a Phil McKnight or, oh, was I supposed to say that? Uh, you can. Hello. Um, someone like his channel or, or anybody's channel, if you look at the channel and the guy's got 250,000 subscribers, you can be damn certain that they're smart enough to have an agenda with their channel. So that they know that the content they're putting out there is content that's going to attract continuous viewers and is content that is going to continue to be monetized and make them a living. They're smart. They're good at it. And I've got no problem with that except for the fact that if you're looking for something that's completely neutral, you're probably not going to find it on one of their channels. There are right. a few exceptions to that rule. Um, but... Like like Pete Thorne, for example. I love Pete Thorne's videos. He does the absolute best demos of all of the products that he demos. But you have to realize that what Pete's doing is he's taking a product and a paycheck from a company that's giving him a product, and he's making a killer demo video that's going to flatter it in the absolute most positive light, and he's putting it out there. That's not a bad thing. I'm ranting now. but And what I mean by it's not a bad thing is he's found the way that that pedal sounds good. And he's showing you this is how it can sound. And I think that that's fantastic because I look at Don Carr or something like that at Sweetwater. And I, I think that he takes a different approach. He, he takes these pedals that can sound good. And I don't think he makes them sound terribly good. Right. So I, I, well, I you guess know all what I'm it saying is. is it's just a warning that, you know, when you see these channels, take it with a grain of salt because... It, it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. The, in, the internet and the YouTube channels that you're talking about basically have become what the magazines used to do. Now, people that used to read Guitar Player Magazine or whether you're still reading it today or reading Guitar World, they have reviews. Well, those reviews are rev reviews of products by companies who advertise in that magazine. Now, you don't have to be a genius to realize you're not going to shit down the throat of a company who's giving you money to advertise in your magazine. So everything is either, if something's terrible, it's treated with kid gloves and they say the nicest possible things 
about it. Everything gets a good review. Right. You're never going to see the review of something where someone's like, this is an absolute piece of garbage. Hey, come and advertise with us some more. That doesn't happen. Right. And and that's what's going on on the, you know, same with Primax, that guy, uh, Hermans, whatever his Mike, name is. Mike Hermans. Yeah. Mike Hermans. Same thing. I mean, he plays great. He's a phenomenal player. People give him pedals and he plays the pedals and shows how they can sound good. Do all pedals sound good? Yeah, kind of. If you're a good player, you're a good you player. Figure. They're going to sound. I love it when people can find the way to make it sound good because it just shows that there is value to the product for some people. It, you know, it's There's just, value in everything. Like, I, let's put it this yeah. way I have this pedal that I'm actually going to be putting on my bass rig. Um, on a guitar, I do not the, like the way this thing sounds. Can I dial in one decent sound out of it? I can. In fact, it sounds too similar to another pedal when I do. And so I took it off because I like that other pedal's far more versatile for my taste. But anything can sound good. And, you know, it's funny because I believe if you're going to make a video, make the pedal sound good. There are some videos that some people do and they're like, I'm going to compare this to this. And here's both pedals that are with the same settings of the knobs. Well, what does that even mean or do? How about use that pedal the way you would use it and then compare it to how you would use that pedal and make them both sound as good as you can. And then I'll tell you which one I think was the better pedal for me. But sitting there saying, I have this knob at 12 o'clock and this is 12 and then that pedal's gonna be, well, who the fuck says 12 o'clock sounds good? Right. Do you know what I mean? It may not even sound good. So it's like, a, it's just a useless demo, um, you know, that people do. And it's I hotter. just find it, yeah, it's, it's nonsense. It's, yeah. it's just, it's just not, it doesn't yeah. make sense to me because I'm like, why would you play me something that you haven't dialed in to make it sound good? You know, if I'm going to, well, we worked in the stores. If, if, if someone wants to hear something, I'm going to show them how the thing sounds great. You want to hear an acoustic guitar? I'm going to strum a G chord. I want you to hear that guitar ring. I want you to hear that top vibrate. I want you to hear the thing sound good. Right. If yeah, I, no, uh, totally yeah. right. Totally right. Um, you know, another video that I saw this week to, to jump over to the other side of guitar, for, away from gear to playing for a minute, um, I saw a video that somebody put out. I think it was Jared Dines put it out. You know that guy? He's got, oh, you don't know? He's got like an unbelievable amount of subscribers, which, you know, good for him. Um, I think what does he do? Two, two million subscribers or something. It's all guitar stuff. Oh, but I think he, I know who he is. He just plays and he makes silly videos where he like, you know, will make fun of different styles or whatever it is. He did this oh. video that was called like something like the ultimate shred video. Basically what he did is he recorded some backing tracks, I think, and then sent them around to all of like the well-known YouTube shredders. And right. everybody recorded a small segment, kind of like when Brad Paisley did that that tune with Steve Warner and Red Valkart and all those people. Same yeah. sort of concept. Everybody got, you know, 12 or 16 measures, whatever it was. And it was 18 different people shredding their balls off. Right. And some of them were, I've never heard of them before, and they were just ridiculous. And I was like, good Lord, there's some good players out there. You ever heard of this cat named Angel Vivaldi? I'm assuming that he was influenced by Vivaldi. No. Um, his favorite guitar players were Richie Blackmore. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Page. Right. And Vivaldi. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if it's a stage name. I kind of imagine that it is. But the dude rips. Absolutely yeah. rips. But, um, yeah, anyway, this video, if you can find it out there, just look for, like, 2018, like, Shredder compilation. Um, I was amazed at how many of these people are, first of all, that good props to all of them for being that good. But second of all, all kind of sound the same. You listen to it and it's like, okay, every single person here was influenced heavily by John Petrucci right. and, uh, and, uh, Paul Gilbert. Like, you know, you just hear it in all of their licks and all of their licks are really similar um, except for a few of them. 
And then those few people that sound, you know, this much different and play that much different really stand out. And those are the guys that you're like, I got to go to his channel and check that out. Right. You know, but that's, it's, I just thought it was a cool video. It was something that I found and I was like, ah, yeah, I got to share this. This is cool. So I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can find the exact title of it, but we should share there's it. A, there's the another guy, the, there's, a, there's another guy that has a ton of followers and um, he basically like, he'll be like, today we're going to do the Squire um, versus the, um, the, the Fender Custom Shop. He always does like an Epiphone Les Paul and a real Les Paul. We're going to compare these. And it's like, you're basically comparing electronics. Right. Because, because, I mean, you know, the playing, you know, you're not going to, I, I, we're not, ch- we're not judging the workmanship. I, there's no close ups of the instrument. We can't see the instrument. It's not the feel because one guy's playing it, not, and feel is subjective. So it, it has to be we're comparing electronics, and it just seems like the most pedestrian video, and it gets a million views. i like people are like, and um, I, I saw it once, and I was like, I, what? Why did I put this on? I was just curious what they did, and I was like, maybe he's gonna maybe he's gonna go swap the electronics and make it so they both have the same exact le- electronics, because then you would be showing people that they're the same guitar, but you know, I mean, not the same guitar here but you know what people don't realize is music's you know the audio and so when you're listening to led zeppelin you have no idea in those early records i mean he used a les paul he used a telecaster but you know you're not 100 percent sure which one's which and what he's using and it doesn't and what the color of it doesn't matter and whether the workmanship on the guitar doesn't matter and he played a dan electro and that proved that right they all sound the same it's like but, you know, and, and the thing about what you're saying with all these shred guys is I tend not to watch shred guys because I always feel like it's just an exercise in, like, here's seven guys masturbating. We're, there isn't a song going on. And I think people like, you know, it's like, especially today, we need songs. Um, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. That's if, kind of my point on this video. It's like, really, there's, like, 16 of these 18 people or however many people it is, you know, they all sound just the same. But yeah. And you got two of them who are different. Yeah. And that's, right, piece, sh- it's a good way for you to go. Hold on a second. There's somebody that I need to look up and I'm going to find something new to listen to that I've never heard before. Right. So anyway, if you want to look that up, it's called the biggest shred collab song in the world. 2018. It's bigger than we're stars. <laughs> We are the world. We are the children. We're stars. Do you remember in Married with Children when they had like the old people thing and it was like, we're, what was it? We are the old. We have arthritis. No. <laughs> I don't remember. There was a bit. Oh, oh, they did like a USA for uh, Africa type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bit. I think it, <laughs> it was like a, it. it was like Al Bundy thought he was going to be hosting a beauty contest, and it ended up being like old women, like an elderly beauty contest. It the was heavy hilarious. metal one is the heavy metal one. Where stars is obviously the worst ever. Oh yeah, the we are thunder. We are, we are spark. We're the light in the dark. Yeah, it's a uh, it's Dio oh, classic Dio yeah. lyrics too. Unbelievable. And we all want to touch the rainbow? Unbelievable. You know what I was listening to the other day? <laughs> Remember I was talking about a classic Marshall tone? Michael Shanker had some classic Marshall tone. There's a song called uh, Into the... Is it Into the Arena? No, no. I'm Den Ready. I'm Den Ready could be the greatest rock song ever. Um, yeah, I don't know it off the top of my head. Oh, my God. No, they have, they have a tune that I really, really like. And um, I'm going to look it up real quick because I can't remember anything right now. On but, and on. Um, um, I can't even think of the name of the band right now. UFO. Um, oh, UFO. I was talking about Michael Schenker group. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, it's a UFO tune that I dig. Um, is it called Lights Out? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like light, I like Lights Out. I find that guitar tone to be awful. 
Uh, it's, well, I, it's I, just, I think I, it's it's, it's I, like I think the UFO tone is worse yeah. than the Michael Schenker group. He sounds great. Does he? Okay, I'll have to look. That oh up. yeah, you look up on and on or armed and ready. Armed and ready is fantastic. You know, there's a tune from uh, UFO that Steve Harris says is his all-time favorite song. It's not Doctor Doctor, is it? No, 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 no. It's something, something dumb. Um, maybe natural thing or something like that. It's it's like a it's like a concept rock song. I'm trying to th- think what it is. I, know, I'm maybe, not a you. I've never. You been know what shy. it is? I was I was wrong. It's love to love. Oh, love to love. Great yeah. song. Yeah, Steve Harris says that's his all time favorite song. <laughs> it's shocking. It's like really. That's a great song though. <laughs> And, and and I'm not a big UFO fan, but I will say, didn't somebody cover Love to Love? Somebody covered it. I um the the Obsession album by UFO is an album to have. I think um there's so many great songs on that record. The Lights Out album, I'm not a fan of. I think the thing for 2019 that I'm gonna start focusing on is online backing tracks. Nice. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I think I'm gonna play guitar to backing tracks from now on. I started screwing with this stuff like a week ago, and uh, oh, it's fantastic. There's all kinds of backing tracks on YouTube. I'm finding yeah, YouTube always. to be invaluable these days. <laughs> what I use? How do, what do you think I'm doing for my my intros? I'm always just doing it right to the backing track. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I just... I'm just finding it on YouTube. Yeah. So, anyways, I bought that pedal board from you because I'm going to use the, the tuner. Then I'm going to go into a compressor. Right. OCD for a little drive. You're listening to Bass Talk. Yeah, sorry. And a, um, this is called the Sound Blocks. It's basically like an envelope filter. Oh, okay. For that, for that Bootsy sound. And I have a gig playing bass on the 19th this month. And uh, I just had to learn Street Life, which is a real fun bass song. And uh, Virtual Insanity by Jamiroquai, which oh, is a cool. Fun, yeah, great bass song, too. Right on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, my slapping is getting getting a lot better like my just because I'm from playing like a uh, hybrid picking now it's so much easier to play uh it's so funny because how old am I 50 at about 47 48 years old a lot of things I found very difficult to do on the guitar stopped being difficult and I don't know why you lowered uh, your the, standards yeah no seriously it's the weirdest thing like <laughs> Like, I never would hybrid pick because I couldn't. And now I can hybrid pick like it's nothing. And, it, and I'm like, this is the easiest thing. That's funny. It's weird. I don't know what it is. Well, I think it goes to tell everybody in 2019, your job is to practice. Hey, do you know how to get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, man. Practice. <laughs> The old ones are the best ones. Folks, get your shit in gear. Just sit at home. I don't care if you got a line. If, if you're looking at videos because you want to buy a Bogner amp and you have no gigs, you have no intention of gigging, get yourself a spider. Get yourself a line six and sit at home and just practice and keep it on the clean channel and work your way up and just practice. You don't need... Um, millions of dollars a gear, I say, with a million amps behind me. But I'm just saying, you don't need all that gear. I'm gigging three nights a week, and um, and even then, this is too much. But yeah. get yourself practicing, and uh, it's, you know, it's music. It's all about the music. It's not about the uh, this disease of hunting gear. Yeah, play the backing tracks. So you can yes. make sure that you're not just noodling nonsense and that you're playing relevant, relevant and, chops and all that. And record it and play Indeed. it back to yourself. Because what happens when you do that, you go back and you're like, um, I'll tell you what, I, you, you go back and you listen and you're like, God, I stink. Because what the hell was I playing? I'll say this, and this is the best exercise I can tell any student of mine or anybody, is if you're listening to backing tracks, take it with you, make a recording of it, and go put it in your car. Write the solo in your head and figure out what the hell the solo in your head was and learn how to play it. And you'll find out that what you're playing is not what you would normally pick up the guitar to play. 
there you go. Sing, sing that solo because it takes you into a different place where you can then train yourself to play that way, to play what's in your head, as opposed to um, the Clapton style from you know 1967, which is just play stock licks. You know, and that's not from me. That was Clapton's quote. He was yeah. in an interview when someone was, he was like, "Do you play certain things?" He goes, "Yeah, I have stock licks that I always just throw in," and it's like. You want to get away from that. I agree. I, so the whole reason I looked up these backing tracks to begin with is because I wanted to expand my toolbox, so to say. Yeah. I, I, you know, as I'm playing, I'm sitting there thinking, like, every time I go to play a lead, every time I play this lick. Every single time I play this lick. And so I was like, I got to get out of this. So, folks, 2019, practice. Make sure that you're practicing relevant music with backing tracks, with... If you have a looper and you want to build your own backing tracks, whatever you do, just make sure that it's musical and relevant. I'll tell you something funny. Erin Ann, when I used to pick up a guitar, she would always just say, you're going to play the same fucking lick every time you pick up a guitar? I'm like, oh, do I? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's annoying. It's like, it's not very good. Oh, there you go. Uh, brutal. brutal. Classic. But true, but true. It, re- it makes you conscious of it because then when you pick it up, you're like, okay, let me, it just, things make you, you know, be aware. That's all I could say. Be a scared. Be very a scared. Indeed. No, be aware of what you're playing. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, I put the string joy strings on my, uh, my USA Schecter. Oh, yeah. How was it? They feel good. All right. I got no then, complaints. You know, it, it's funny with strings. It's like, are you as good as my Diderio in terms of the sound and the feel? If you are, you're good. Yeah. It's like with strings, I don't ever, I don't think I've ever said anything like, you know, oh, it's phenomenal. It's like, it's good or it's not good. It's right. the only two, it's, it's more of a binary choice for me. It's like, is it good or not good? Is These, there a not good string for you? Um, it, well, Dean Markley. Really? Yeah, I don't like the way they feel. The windings don't feel right. They feel like rough sandpaper to me, whereas Daddario Mark- feels appropriate. Yeah. I would say for me it's Ernie Ball. Yeah. Just don't care for them. They always sound dead coming out of the, the pack. Yeah, no, it's about a feel thing for me, but yeah, the string joy strings that they sent me, they feel really good. So they're a joy. Yeah, next is right. gonna be more of a price thing. Like uh, I don't know how much they cost or anything, but eight hundred dollars. You know, I don't mind supporting a small company. We'll see how long they last. That'll be the next test. But so well, far they're to- great. I went to their website and I mean, not the, and they have a video and the guy's showing how they wind videos, but then they never show the winding. He just talks the whole time. So and I was thoroughly annoyed. I mean, I was <laughs> thoroughly annoyed. And I was just annoyed by um, he, over explaining something that he wasn't ever going to show. It, it just, you didn't need to be by the machine and talking about it. But it just seemed very weird. Right. Uh, I wasn't a fan, but I mean, if they're good, they're good. What do I care? Uh, but anyways, uh, have a great year, man. Great New Year's. Be a safe one. I'm sure you're just going to have fun with the kids. And uh, what are you guys doing? Oh, I don't know. It's This is not a holiday that I've ever gotten good at celebrating. You know, oh, we, I love before, the holidays. Before the kids, we used to go out to you know bars and do what most people do, but these days with them eh, who knows probably let them stay up late and we'll, we'll figure yeah. it out it won't be remember, anything it won't be anything that anybody listening to the show will be like that's what i gotta do remember on a uh, family guy when the kid uh, brian has a son and he says i wish i had a gun i'd kill you and peter goes oh now we know what to get him for christmas i love the holidays <laughs> uh it's another great show <laughs> anyway what are you guys doing uh same thing same thing we are just gonna hang in our kids will stay up late and we'll hang out and watch movies or something perfect and with that we shall reset everybody our time at the microphones everybody have a great and safe one and we'll see you next uh week indeed same great. time same place same bad channel you're listening to new year's talk <laughs> all, right, all right everybody later, have a great later. day bye
You're listening to Guitar Talk with Dave and John. 